All right, I guess I'll, we'll have you introduce yourself real quick and then oh. just go and talk about some of your favorite clients or deals you've done in the past. Okay, so I'm Victor Walmet. I'm a broker in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've also been a broker uh, in Seattle, Washington, and San Jose, California, Carmel Valley, California. Uh, I got into investment real estate uh, because I was a small builder developer in Carmel Valley and I built our dream home in one of our many recessions. I lost our dream home and I ended up driving two hours a day to San Jose to learn how to sell investment real estate. And when I got there, the broker I went to work for said, Victor, he said, the most important thing is in this business is if people can trust you. He says, if people can trust you, they'll give you 20 bucks to put gas in your tank so you can show them investment property opportunities. And I said, yeah, Jack, that's fine. What I really need rather than advice is a deal right now. And he laughed, we both laughed about it, but doggone two months later, I'm closing my first deal with these guys at this office. I have barely enough gas to get to the escrow company. It's 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon. So we close the deal and tomorrow at one o'clock, I'm gonna have $6,000 in my pocket. But tonight I don't have enough gas to get home. So we're walking out to the, to the parking lot with my clients and I just stopped and said, damn it all. I said, what's wrong? I said, I left my billfold at home. I said, it's got my credit card in it. I didn't have a credit card at the time. It's got my credit card in it. I don't have enough gas to get home. The guy said, no problem. Here's 20 bucks. Hey, pay me back tomorrow when you bring me the keys. So that little prophecy about trust and, and trust is the most important component in a, in a deal. And it's, if you're a younger broker working in this, you can build trust like a muscle and trustworthiness is based on basically doing what you say you're going to do. And if you do that, your clients know that, and it, it applies to little things like showing up for time on time for an appointment. Like if you're five minutes, if you're always five minutes early, those clients are going to know that they can count on you. And some guru that I met one time said, you know, when you start keeping your agreements, as when you start doing what you say you're going to do, your whole world will change. And so the best muscle you can develop is trust. And I'll give you an example of that. I had a client, this is 30 years ago in San Jose. He was a bus driver. He uh, built a little portfolio out of buying single family homes, duplexes. We traded him up into properties and swear to God, four weeks ago, I have not seen this guy in 31 years. He calls me on the phone from California. He says, Victor he says, I got some problems with a couple real estate deals I'm doing out here. He says, you're the only broker I know I can trust to get this deal done. Well, I didn't, obviously I referred him to someone in California. I'm not licensed to do business there, but just shows you an example of how long those trust bonds last if you form them with clients. And Dennis was another good example of if you're a young broker getting in the business, the best people you can work with are public employees, your bus drivers, firemen, policemen, school teachers. Why are they great? They're great loan qualifiers. You know, they, they always have a job. Uh, their employer is never going to go out of business and they almost never get laid off. So lenders love those guys. And a lot of those people are really anxious to build a portfolio for themselves on the side. They don't have time to do it themselves. So they'll love you if you do it for them. Uh, a great example of that was a client I had in Seattle. Um, what was his name? Carl. Carl was a fireman. And Carl, you know, firemen are great because they work like three days a week. Maybe they work uh, 36 hours in a row. You know, they sleep at the firehouse. And then they got four days off. They got nothing to do. And all those guys know how to do stuff. And they all have buddies. Now, okay, I'll wire your house for you. You show up and do my plumbing. They trade work like that. They work together. So they're very uh, industrious kind of clients. Well, this guy, Carl, said, I want to buy an investment house. Well, you know, a little fixer. I didn't really do that business, but I found him one. I found him a little fixer. And he fixed it up the next year. He said, let's trade. I want to, I want to get something bigger. So we traded it up into a duplex. And a year, maybe 18 months later, he said, okay, this is ready to go. We traded it up into a fourplex. 
and gosh, it was one of those boom times in Seattle for a while and his fourplex really went up into value and he had an opportunity and we did it. We traded it up into 16 units for this particular, this guy's a fireman, right? He's still working. And then Seattle hit one of those, again, one of their downturns when the chip market goes down or Microsoft wasn't doing so well. And Carl was able to trade that 16 units up into a 120 unit apartment building for some people that we ran into that were in trouble, you know, with their cash flow and for other reasons. And you know what Carl did six months later? He quit his job, man. And now I suppose he's lazy and uh, he's uh, probably fat and happy and lazy and living off his 120 units. Or maybe he did more than that. I don't know. But that's what you can do if you get people who have clients who are willing to add value to their property and, and you're able to show them how to trade it up through a tax deferred exchange or another mechanism into larger properties. Because if you do the tax deferred exchange, you're multiplying their equity by about, you know, they don't have to pay tax. They don't have to pay 20% tax on their gains. So you've given them instead of uh, $80,000 in equity, suddenly they have almost 110,000, the equivalent of $110,000. So the, their wealth mu multiplying effect just steps up dramatically. So those are a couple stories. So were you a broker before you got into exchanging? Yes, and a little bit. And so even though it was a little bit, like how dramatically did it change? It seems like it changes everything, right? Okay, here's the, here's the two great, three great things you change. First of all, you can make quite a bit of money doing it. Second of all, if you look at the people that are in the business, if you did psychological testing on them, you would find they're almost all high in a, in a trait called openness which means they're open to new ideas, new ways of thinking. They like ideas. They like to uh, explore ideas. Uh, and if you look at, at all the creative people you know, the writers, the filmmakers, the entrepreneurs, they all test high on openness. And what that does for you as a broker is you get to hang out with really interesting people. These are not ordinary, you know, nine to five people. Well, they're kind of nine to five. They're not ordinary people. They're interesting. They have fun things to say. You'll have fun with them. You can, you can make jokes with them. You can explore new ideas with them. And almost to a T, there are people who do not work on the weekends. They do not want to hear about property on the weekends because they're into, they're not looking at single family homes. They're not going out caring what, what color the carpet is. You know, they're doing investment property. So Friday at five o'clock comes, they've gone to the lake. Saturday they're at the kids' soccer game, Sunday they're in church. You know, they don't want to hear about real. Monday morning, and they're ready to go again. So I always got to hang out with good people and I got to have my weekends free. And I thought that was just a wonderful combination. Do you, what do you think it's a stretch to consider um, real estate uh, an art form? Oh, as an art form? It depends, Some people, for many people it is, yes. Because uh, you know, what's creation? You're creating, creation means you're making something out of nothing. So you say you're a real estate developer. You've got this idea, I can do this with a piece of property. That's uh, energy out there in the ether. You take that energy and you, you transform it into the material world until you're building houses out there. It's the essence of creativity. In terms of, right, so there's the physical aspect, but in terms of the application of formulas, do you think that gets into, like, that's where the word <laughs> Yeah, that's where, right. yeah, you're always exploring new ways to do things. I mean, you're just meeting people's needs. The seller needs this and the buyer needs this and doesn't there there's not one way or two ways to do that there's five or ten or fifteen or twenty and knowing the various real estate formulas for how to accomplish that and make everybody happy yeah it's way creative now I know you didn't create the polio vaccine but <laughs> do you think that you've made the world a better place through your career absolutely you know one of the joys of what I do is we take we take older properties and we bring them back to life. Like uh, right now, I'm just finishing up a project. We took an old little six unit apartment uh, office building, been vacant for two years or something. And we turned it into seven, uh, what we call them live work units, which are, you know, a lot of people want to work at home now. So these are zoned for that. They're appropriate for that. They're uh, ADA compliant for that. So yeah, it's a very creative thing. You take something old and you renew it. Yeah. Awesome. And then um, my, the last question that I started asking people is, do you like your job? I like my job. I like the people in it. Uh, 
and I like it because it gives me the freedom to do other things that I love to do. I'm a writer, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a script writer, so it gives me the freedom to do those things. Yeah. And it gives me contact with people with money who have, can help me realize those dreams. So yeah, love it.